So I'm Sidra May. Uh, I'm a zinester based in Hamilton, Ontario, and I'm going to be participating in the Center 3 Zine Club's collage uh, exhibition in the middle of the back pages overall exhibition. <laughs> I first discovered zines when I was about 15. I was I had just switched schools from a French Catholic school to an English public school, which was a very big transition. And within that, I spent a lot of time in the library because I did not have any friends, as you often don't when you switch schools suddenly. <laughs> um, and when I was spending a lot of time in this library, I was usually in this little alcove area that had the comfy chairs and the comic books and other art books. And that's where I found what you, what you mean, what's a zine, which is an amazing book that kind of goes over like what zines are, how you can make zines, different ways of putting zines together. And I just like fell in love. I was obsessed with it. Me and one of my best friends made our first zine that year. Uh, I think it was called Brachiosaurus Rex. It had one issue. <laughs> it was awful, but we loved it. And I still own a couple issues actually. Uh, they live in the bottom of a box somewhere. They always will. <laughs> From there, I, I was very lucky at the time. I used to nanny in British Columbia with my aunt and uncle and my uncle lived in Vancouver. So he would just kind of unleash me in the streets of Vancouver when he had meetings at work. And I found Spartacus Books, which is based in Vancouver. And they have this awesome zine collection where I just bought up, I think 30 or 40 zines there the one day and just kind of dove right in. And from there, I kept reading zines when I could, going to zine fairs, but I didn't actually make another zine for years. <laughs> the first, the zine I made next after that first one, I think I was um, 20, 20 or 21. And I was at the tail end of a very abusive relationship. And I made, I was doing all this like weird poetry about that, you know, the way someone copes with a bad abusive breakup. <laughs> and I ended up making that into a um, kind of cyborg punk, uh, poetry zine and from there that really like took off and I started getting really into making zines as often as possible so generally at this point I probably make three or four zines a year and then try and cull it down to the ones I actually like want to keep producing because sometimes you make ones that though they're fun in the moment they might not apply anymore after a little bit or something so um, now it's just something I kind of do as a form of survival um, I find that it's easier to reflect on my experiences within a year by making a zine or um, something that's bothering me or stories from my youth. Uh, a lot of things like that end up coming up in my zines a lot. So the this series here, the Ghost Trash series, is actually my perzine, which is a personal zine. So a lot of people make those when they're just kind of reflecting on their own experiences. I make one a year. So this is the last two years of my life. Um, I'm working on a third one now for uh, the zine fair that is happening during back pages, actually. Uh, and generally what I like to do with these ones is just kind of reflect on like what I've gone through that year and write about like a bunch of goofy things that I feel and experience. So like within this one, I did a bunch of uh, some poetry stuff. Uh, I talked a bit about all the um, cartoon goth girls I had crushes on growing up, which is kind of an exploration of queer identity uh, I did a bit about leaving my abusive relationship and how that affected me. Um, and some stuff about my grandmother who passed away about seven years ago now, which uh, was something that I didn't deal with for a really long time. It was a, the year that I made this scene that actually finally started working through the grief of that and what it meant to have my grandmother be dead, um, which I think is something that a lot of people get to do with zines. They get to explore moments in their life that maybe they didn't have the time or the space to cope with them and experience them when it happened. So zines are a really good way to like have a retrospective on something really significant that happened to you that you just didn't know how to cope with at the time. And that's, again, what happens through uh, the following year too. I talk about like my really bad depression that winter and my really horrible way of making friends in which I got too drunk, passed out and vomited on someone's bed and then was anxious for months <laughs> so it's just like the only way that I know how to work through a lot of these emotions because when they're happening I don't I'm not a very reactive person 
I'm a very pensive person. So when it happens, I kind of just shut down and don't know how to react to it later. And that's one of the main things that I get from my zines is being able to react to um, things that happened while I was growing up or things that happened to me within the last year and get to actually decide how I feel about them as opposed to just the initial, this happened. Okay, I'm gonna put that away until later. <laughs> um, and then my identities kind of weave into all of these because a lot of the times my identities affect these moments of like not knowing if I'm in a space that's safe for queer and trans people or not being able to make the space for myself that I should be or discussing my dysphoria. Or um, this one was actually uh, one I did for class that I ended up continuing to print that's about non-binary genders and how people use their fashion to assert their gender identity, which I think is a really fascinating area that we don't see a lot. When you talk about fashion magazines, it's very binary. So seeing how a lot of non-binary people can use color and experiences and draw that into their clothing is really fascinating. And I think that it's one of those ways that we can talk back and really make statements about our tra queer trans identities that we normally can't. So I feel like this is one of the ways that I can be unapologetically queer and trans and give that to people. Because one of the first scenes I read that I like really identified with was um, Short and Queer, which was about a queer trans man. And I just fell in love with it. I wanted to know everything about this person. I bought other uh, zines that they made just to learn more about their experience because I was identifying with it so thoroughly. And I always kind of hope that maybe my zines will do that for someone else. And if they do, then I guess I've done a good job as a zinester. <laughs>